Good morning, Word of Life Church and all of our faithful YouTube friends. We're out here in our field. Uh, I rent uh, the farm out to some uh, fine folks that grow organic soybeans and corn and, and hay. And uh, this year we're going to be growing some soybeans. And so just as I've watched them cultivate the ground and just sort of prepare that, um, one of the things in our conversation that came up was, you know, sort of why and how often and when do you cultivate. And so it's sort of one of those things that they cultivate as often as necessary. And, uh, and so what they're doing is trying to stay ahead of the weeds. And so, you know, Sandra and I this week, we got some flowers and we're very excited about that. And we're enjoying the, the prettiness of the flowers and sort of them growing. But one of the things that is a sure thing is those weeds are going to try and come up and begin to take over. And so that's actually why they're looking after the fields the way they do. They've got them beautifully level right now for soybeans. And uh, so what will happen is as those uh, weeds have actually started to grow, uh, they'll go in there and they'll be torn up. The roots will be exposed and then the weeds will die. Then they'll come in and plant and then they'll need to be very diligent in doing that, which got me thinking about our lives. You know, one of the things as a Christian, and it gets really difficult because at times there is such division in the world, and it got me thinking about Hebrews chapter 12. And so I want to look, today isn't necessarily like the, the fun, uh, 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 you know, video of just everybody make you feel good, but I believe that just like them cultivating this ground and getting it ready if you get ready, your ground and your life doesn't have to look barren like this. Something can change in your life. And so when we begin to look at things, we talked about our hearts a couple of weeks ago. We talked about different soil types. And when you begin to just examine yourself, because only you can do that, I believe that God can begin to do a work in your life. I know he sure needs to do a work in my life. But the barrenness that we see out here doesn't have to be in your life. And so let's have a look here. Uh, Hebrews chapter 12 verse 14 it says pursue peace with all people pursue peace with all people in holiness without which no one will see the lord looking carefully lest anyone fall short of the grace of god lest any root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble and it got me really thinking about that let lest the root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble. I wonder in your life today, as we sort of look at the landscape of your life and my life, you know, I mean, as you preach that, I'm preaching to myself so much right now, but notice it said the root of bitterness spring up and cause trouble. And so sometimes in our lives, it's very easy to look at somebody else. Well, you know, you should see how they treated me, or you should see, you know, I didn't get that promotion when I was the next in line, or, you know, uh, my kids are not responding the way they should, or my spouse, or whatever your situation may be. There can be things that to you would feel very empty and barren like this ground. But the scripture here, it says, first of all, it says, pursue peace. Verse 14, pursue peace. Always look to pursue peace in life. Then it goes on to talk about the root of bitterness. Now, if you were to take the word, the root of bitterness, it actually becomes a mental stronghold. I want to show you something here. Uh, the root of bitterness or the root word for, uh, in, it's called rizzo. In the Greek, it means to be firmly embedded or fixed. You know, one of the neat things about growing hay when they grew it years ago here, they would grow alfalfa. And those alfalfa roots would grow down like super deep. Like it's almost like a tap root that would go way down. And they're going to go down to the water and become embedded and firmly fixed in the ground. Matter of fact, the good news about proper crop rotation is some of those roots, like a, a, an alfalfa root, uh, it will go down deep. Those things cause the ground to open up and it actually will receive water better. It will become aerated because this is clay ground. And if you don't aerate this ground properly, matter of fact, if you pack it too soon, if you get out there when it's a bit damp, it will become like cement and you don't want that. But much of our life can be very similar to that. Your life, your heart can almost become rooted and fixed and embedded with bitterness. You say, well, pastor, I, I don't know how that you know, I don't know that that really has happened to me. You know, um, in Proverbs 4, 23, it says, guard your heart with all diligence because out of your heart flows the issues of life. So if we don't want this landscape, we've got to really begin to make sure that we're cultivating something in our life, which is good practices, cultivating something to not allow the weeds to grow or allow them to begin to tap into the ground or become firmly embedded and fixed in our life. Well, how does that happen? Well, it's like this. Um, if you look at this, it says, uh, looking carefully, 
lest anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any, any root of bitterness should spring up and cause trouble, by which this many have become defiled. Now, how a root of bitterness starts, according to Scripture, is first of all, it enters the mind. We, we make a judgment. We look at somebody and think, well, you know, they shouldn't respond that way, or they shouldn't drive that way, or, you know, they should, you know, who knows? You know, the coffee line should be moving quicker in Tim Hortons today. They got those counters up there, and today is the worst day I've ever seen, and I'd like to get out of line if I could, and after all, I come here every day. And so you see, you begin to de develop an attitude, as some, something as simple as waiting for a cup of coffee. I might be speaking to you right now. I know I'm speaking to me. Maybe it's, like I said, a job promotion. Maybe it's, you know, well, I've just worked so hard and it should be appreciated and everybody should be clapping for me. There could be a number of things. But what happens is, notice it said here, if you let the root of bitterness come in, it will spring up and cause trouble. Well, what could that be? Well, let's even look at something as simple as Sand and I are going on, uh, we're gonna be 31 years this year. And you know what? It's been a great 31 years, but I want to promise you this. There has been lots of opportunities to let those roots spring up and cause trouble. There's been lots of opportunity to say, well, you know, how come I've got to work so hard? And maybe at times I could say, well, how come I'm working harder than she is? Or she could think the same thing or whatever it is, right? Whatever something in your life that comes into your mind and say, well, I've got a friend that just seems to do that just a little bit better. I, I've got a, you know, friends of ours, their marriage just appears to be just a little bit better. And those things, if you allow them to grow, they will spring up slowly. And if, if anything, over 30 years, you can begin to develop, they call that a bitter root judgment. Now, I can say safely that San and I have had good communication about those things over the years. And so we've not allowed those things to fester as long as others have or situation. What I mean by others is other things in my heart or other things in my life. So I'm kind of telling on myself right now, there are opportunities in your life where you allow that bitter root judgment to say, so here's what happens. You, you get it in your mind. You begin to say, well, I'm justified in saying this. They shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have did this. And so what happens? is this it goes down into your heart and just like that alfalfa root it begins to embed itself that it makes a stronghold so much so that there's no convincing you any other way it's kind of like good farming practices over the years we've saw how to cultivate the land we've saw we've went from plow the fields to cultivate them to you know make lots of dust to no-till to allow the worms to move things and grow you know just cause things to organically grow and so you begin to look at different farming practices we have that with our cattle just over here is the pasture and so there's different ways you know I remember when we would just literally it would look like a golf course the cattle would eat everything right down to nothing the problem with that is it looked like they were consuming lots but the roots that were good the plants that were good were actually being affected because they didn't have the right root system and so what happens is that they would die off and so over time we've learned good farming practices and so um, what we're talking about here today is that root that tends to begin to grow and, and it starts in the thought it starts it with an observation right it starts with an observation it starts with a, a judgment and it may feel innocent the problem is you begin to have that judgment and you talk about it with four different friends over four different cups of coffee and eventually it becomes something that's rooted and embedded in your heart now that's why Proverbs comes in at 423. It says, uh, guard your heart. Let's just have a quick look there. Remember, why are we guarding our heart? Because it said earlier, it said, if you allow the root of bitterness to spring up, it will cause trouble. Today, is there some trouble being caused in your life? Are there things that are not being cultivated? Are there things that are not growing the way they should? Are there things, maybe it's friendships, right? Social media has created a real and I use social media, but let's be honest, it's created this, this mirage that suddenly we look at everyone's life and we only see how much better their life is than ours. That's not real. That's not necessarily true. There might be pieces that are true, but what happens is it gets in, embedded in your head and it'll grow into your heart. And then you'll actually, you know, we actually develop judgments about people or situations that we've never, we've never met the person, right? You've never met the person, but because of you've seen things or thought things, it gets down and it embeds itself into your heart. So let's go over to Proverbs, because remember, if you allow it, it will spring up and then it will cause trouble. So Proverbs 
uh, chapter 4, it says, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. So whatever that issue is in your life, that's something that you need to be diligent. Now, we've said before, when they begin to plant these crops and sow them into the ground, they're going to be diligent. They will know. That GPS will actually guide them and show them where the rows are. And they'll be diligent in uprooting the weeds, but diligent in leaving the crop in the ground. So here's this. God has started a work in your life. He's started a plan. He says, for I know the plans that I have towards you, plans of a future and hope, not of harm, but of good. So God's got that planted in your life. But maybe we've allowed something to root down in, and it'll actually uproot what God has planted you know sometimes it's just like when you get when I get a little carried away in weeding in the garden and you just start tearing everything up before you know it you got a handful of something that you say I had planted that that was supposed to stay there you know maybe that flower was supposed to stay there and so you carefully try and put that back but sometimes if we allow that root of bitterness to embed itself if we allow that to become like cement if we allow that to creep in it will stop the issues of life that's why you're to guard your heart that's why you are to begin to say you know what i'm not going to allow that now i'm not asking you to be silly and never let things enter your mind because they're gonna right the words uh, we've had uh, you know they say that you can't stop uh, uh birds from flying above your head but you can stop them from landing on your head and so if you think about that you can have a thought it can come into your mind, but you determine whether or not it roots into your heart. Because if you allow it to root into your heart, you know, uh, it'll actually affect what you think, how you say. It will even affect your facial expressions. It just literally will become, you'll become a different person, uh, maybe concerning somebody. You know, uh, you know, Paul talked about a thorn in the flesh. And let's be honest, sometimes people that come in and out of our lives, they're not just a thorn in the flesh. They can be a complete bush. But if you've allowed that root to get in there, you can just, you literally can change in a moment when you see them walk in a room. And so that's a good indication that maybe you need to remove that judgment. Maybe you need to uproot that. So how do you do that? How do you, you say, Pastor, you talk about these things. We want to be careful not to allow them to root in our heart. We want to be careful not to allow them to go from our head to our heart. We want to allow, well, first of all, the Bible says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. I think the most important thing we can do is every day examine ourselves before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't want to allow any bitter root. I don't want to allow anything to tap into my life that will cause trouble. Remember, we said that. It said in Hebrews, if you allow that root, it's going to cause trouble. So maybe being honest with God and saying, look, A, we know we're imperfect. B, we know we blow it lots. But coming before him and just saying, Lord, I just repent of anything that separates me. I repent of anything that could be causing trouble in my life and Lord give me wisdom show me how to respond to that person show me how to you know what uh, the Bible says that love covers a multitude of sin maybe they've done you wrong but the love of God can begin to just invade that area just like weeds can try and invade when you begin to plant love when you begin to smile and say you know what I'm gonna pray for them I'm gonna be an encouragement to them I'm gonna forgive them you know what maybe we are gonna need to let some stuff go and at times that's hard I'm not, I don't believe the Lord's ever asking you to forget maybe the harm, but you can allow the bitterness to be healed, right? Think about that. In a business transaction, you use wisdom. You might say, I forgive that person and I'll choose to love that person, but it doesn't mean I'll do business with that person. So you kind of take that same uh, uh, scenario and apply that in life. You say, you know what? Uh, I'm going to love them in the Lord, but it doesn't mean necessarily that I'm just going to climb right back into their life or climb right back into that situation. Because if you're not careful, you'll allow that bitter root judgment to grow again. So uproot it come before the Lord and just repent and just give that over to him and say, Lord, show me how to do this. And some of this you're going to have to do by faith because just like 30 years of marriage, you've got 30 years of habits. You've got 30 years of a thought process. And so you need to begin to move past that and move through what God has for you. Because remember this, it said, pursue peace. In Hebrews, the first thing we read, Hebrews 12, 14, it says, pursue peace with all people. And that's what we need to do. I'm going to leave that with you today. The Probably the next time we do this video, maybe we'll do it out here. The crop will be growing. You'll see it popped up. And they'll have made sure that there are no weeds that are trying to creep in. And so they're going to take good care of that. You take good care of the life that God has given you. Amen? Number one decision you can make here today, if you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life, that's the most important decision you'll ever make. Nothing else matters. Repentance to repent from sin and receive that free gift of salvation. 
Pray with me today if you would. Lord Jesus, I come before you today and I surrender all of my sin and all of my life and all of my setbacks. And I ask, Lord, right now, as you have forgiven me today, that you would show me, Lord, how I can be that better person. That you would show me, Lord, how I can pursue peace because I want to live for you. I believe, Lord, right now that you're changing the direction of my life. I give you that root of bitterness. I uproot those things right now by faith in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Until next week, have a wonderful week. Take care.